In December, Boris Johnson addressed the first reports of a Christmas party in Number 10. All guidance was followed uh, completely during Number 10. Then, a week later, the Prime Minister said this. I have been repeatedly assured since these allegations emerged that there was no party and that, and that no Covid rules were broken. That same day, the Metropolitan Police put out a statement. It read, based on the absence of evidence and in line with our policy not to investigate retrospective breaches of such regulations, the Met will not commence an investigation at this time. That was then. This is now. I can confirm that the Met is now investigating a number of events that took place at Downing Street and Whitehall in the last two years in relation to potential breaches of COVID-19 regulations. So why the shift? Here's the explanation. As a result, firstly, of the information provided by the Cabinet Office inquiry team, and secondly, my officer's own assessment. That's right. The police first decided not to investigate, but after receiving information from an investigation by the civil servant Sue Gray, the police now will investigate. And this is the Prime Minister's reaction. I welcome the Met's decision to conduct its own investigation because I believe this will help to give the public the clarity it needs and help to draw a line under matters. Also on Tuesday, when Mr Johnson's spokesperson was asked if he thinks he's broken the law, the reply was, I think that's fair to say that he does not. It's also fair to say the opposition has already drawn some conclusions. Potential crim criminality has been found in Downing Street. Yeah. What a truly damning reflection on our nation's very highest office. And while Mr Johnson's under sustained political attack, his supporters have rallied round. The leadership of Boris Johnson this country has had has been so brilliant that he has got us through this incredibly difficult period and he's got all the big decisions right. That opinion is hotly contested. But the police are not concerned with leadership, brilliant or otherwise. They're concerned with whether crimes occurred in number 10. And while we digested their intervention, the fallout continued from ITV News's report on Monday. Paul Brand reported there had been a birthday event for Boris Johnson in number 10 during the first lockdown, telling us up to 30 staff celebrated in the cabinet room where Carrie Johnson surprised him with a cake. We were also told there was a chorus of happy birthday and that those assembled are understood to have eaten picnic food from M&S. This was at a time when most indoor gatherings involving more than two people were banned, to which Number 10 says Mr Johnson was there for less than 10 minutes. And this is the Transport Secretary, Grant Shapps. This is in a workplace uh, with a bunch of people who are working together all of the time who decide to give the Prime Minister a birthday cake on his, his birthday. ITV News also quotes Mr Shapps saying a cake being introduced is wrong. All of which raises lots of questions, a number of which I'm not sure any of us ever expected to be asking. Here's Paul Brand, who broke the story, tweeting, Does a cake make a party? Does singing happy birthday qualify as a party? In isolation, these questions seem absurd, but they're relevant because of the rules at the time. This man broke them and was punished. All those that were there they need to be named and shamed, as, as we were shamed, to accept our responsibilities. And it's... It's time to just get this done once and for all. No more cover-ups. Number 10 denies there's any cover-up. It denies rules were broken. And one Conservative MP has raised this concern. When Europe stands on the brink of war and there is a cost-of-living crisis, can we please have a sense of proportion yeah. over the Prime Minister yeah. being, given, yeah. being given a piece of cake in his own office by his own staff? That's a reference to the build-up of Russian troops on Ukraine's border, to which the Prime Minister turned earlier. We will not reopen that divide by agreeing to overturn the European security order because Russia has placed a gun to Ukraine's head. And so, while Mr Johnson and other Western leaders face down Russia, the Prime Minister and his colleagues also face questions about what happened in Number 10. Questions from the press, questions from Sue Gray, and now questions from the police.